Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode number 47 for you all, and we're going to be taking a deep dive into a topic that has been a big talking point this entire NBA season. And that's really just been the scoring explosions that we've seen for multiple players. Even last night, Steph Curry dropped 60 in a loss against Atlanta. Um, And we're just going to talk about it. A lot of people have mixed opinions, whether it's a defensive issue, if it's an officiating issue, if the talent in the league has really just reached that level where people have been saying 50 might be the new 30, is 70 the new 50? Like, we have saw four – like, it's crazy to wrap your mind around this. We saw four 70-point games in the span of one calendar year, basically, that's, or like a year and a half. That's insane. Lil, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Joel Embiid, and Luka. Bro, if I get one 70 point game in a year, I'm like, it's, it's made. I'm good. The year's made. Like, that's OD. But to get four in one year, is, it's ridiculous. That don't even make sense. Crazy. So, we're going to, we're going to have a full on discussion, break all that down. We're also definitely going to be reacting to the full all star rosters, which have come out now. Um, Ten, talk about how hard it is to put these rosters together and, and some of the guys who inevitably had to be snubbed from these lists. And at the end, we're going to be playing a little bit of guess that NBA player going to have some some throwbacks, some nostalgia vibes coming in here for y'all from some of the our players from from at least our childhood, maybe y'all's childhood as well. Um, going to get the housekeeping out of the way as always. YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead over to the audio platforms, leave us a five star review, and pre download the show. Um, playback. We're going to get into playback very shortly. That's in the link tree in the description as well. Go ahead and join our room on playback and then follow us on the socials that you see on the screen there as well at off the glass pod on Instagram and at off the glass podcast on TikTok. with that. How are we doing today, Dame? How are we feeling, bro? I'm doing good, man. Doing great. Uh, my Lakers love beating bad team or being good teams, losing the bad ones, man. So Blake show, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Crazy. Other than that, I'm doing fine. Crazy. Cannot believe they, of all the teams for the Knicks to lose, there was a nine-game win streak, right? Mm-hmm. Lose to the Lakers. Win. We're the best, man. Don't let us get into the playoffs. That was all the, that's where all the good teams is at. And we're going to play up. When we got something to play for, we hoop. But other than that, we suck. You think the 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 rumors that they're going to trade LeBron, think that got any any type of, any ounce of truth to it? They was going through Buddy's old tweets, and, you know, he's been on it with some of LeBron stuff. Yeah, not one bit, bro. Not one bit. I'm be honest. With you. He's not getting traded. LeBron. I honestly think LeBron has this thing where he doesn't like. Like he play. He plays to the end of his contract all the time. And he never asked for a trade. He's never been traded. So I don't think he'll start now. Um, but that, he could be done after this year. I'll tell you that much. He's probably gone. But I mean, it is what it is. Even if Brown was to get traded, like I genuinely don't think we're winning anything this year. So like to get stuff back for him, like I'm not like a. Le- LeBron Lakers fan, so I'm not like LeBron has to be on our team. Like, if he gets traded, like we're gonna lose him anyway. We get something for him, okay? Fine with me. I don't really care. So fair. Really I good. can respect that. I can respect that because it's a lot of y'all out there that bandwagon, <laughs> bro. It's listen. It's a bro. I don't even know who's a real, who's a fake Lakers fan at this point, bro. I honestly sometimes I feel like I want him to move on so I could, you know, what I'm saying the real fans could come back. And we could really mm-hmm. be Lakers fans, but it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Yeah, but like you said, they did have a, a great game last night. Austin Reeves was was on one the whole game. Um, down the stretch, LeBron out here with some defensive effort, some intensity. Sitting in that um, chair. Yeah, and I, look, honestly, still got like hats off to the Knicks for battling as hard as they did in that game. Obviously, still without Julius Randle and uh, Mitchell Robinson. Um, that Knicks team is fun, bro. Like, flat out. I think I fully locked into their game against the Pacers last week. And they're just – I really think they are becoming one of my favorite teams to watch just because of how much effort – it feels like everybody that subs in for them is giving 110% effort at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Brunson to be, you know, 6'1", 6'2", scoring at the clip that he does, being able to engine that offense the way that he does, bro, so impressive. So mm-hmm. impressive. This is uh I think we said this before, like this is the most this team feels like a Knicks team. Mm-hmm. This is like this is a Tibbs team through and through. They're like 
grinding it out. They got the hustle. They bought in. People don't care. Um, so it's it's always good when the the big market teams are doing good. But I am I'm impressed with what the Knicks have been doing, especially again with the injuries that they're dealing with. So shout out to them. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. With that, we're gonna get right into our main topic again. We're going to be talking about the scoring outbursts that we've seen in the NBA. And like, just to recap, and this is top of my head. So if I'm missing any, damn, you let me know. Y'all let me know in the comments, or whatever. But we had Embiid went for 70, mm-hmm. went for 62 in a loss. Luca went for 73. Uh, D Book just went for 62, right? 62. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steph went for 60 in a loss last night. Um, we've had multiple 50 point games. I know Maxi just had a 51 point game the other day. Giannis has 60, I believe, early in the season. Giannis did have a 60 point game. That feels like ages ago. That's crazy. Thanks. Um, hopefully he finally got the game ball from that one. <laughs> um, they get like, I, I'm positive we're missing multiple 50 point games, but those are oh, the, for sure. the top of our head. Bradley Beal dropped 43 today, and that feels like I, – I, I saw the headline, and it was like, whatever. I was driving when it happened. I'm not even that interested in seeing it, partially because it was against the Wizards. But at the same time, like, <clears throat> people be driving 40 regular. That's that's life at this well, point right now. It's so quick because I felt the same thing. I saw the headline. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, he dropped 43 points, bro. What you mean? Oh, that's cool. Like, nah, that's like, – right. bro, listen, man, it's – Oh, we're getting numb to it, bro. We're really just getting numb yeah. to all this like high scoring games because people are up in it. Like it's it's insane. The scoring in this league is, is honestly getting crazy. Yeah, I use I, I used to really try to force myself to not get numb to it, to be like, nah, bro, you putting up 40 points, that's impressive. But it's it's almost impossible at this point because it's happening so frequently. It feels like every night people are somebody is dropping 40 plus. Mm-hmm. It was like almost guaranteed, and that used to be a big deal. So my drops forty, so my drops fifty. Dudes get to fifty, and it's like, bro, the broadcast is like, oh, we're seeing something special tonight. Like I said, we've probably seen double digit fifty point games already, probably more than that. Maybe pushing like fifteen or twenty, and we're before the All Star break. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so where I really want to start is where. I think a lot of the discourse around this topic has been around. I want to, I want to get your thoughts on this. How much of this do you really feel is indicative of where defense is in the NBA right now? So right now I truly feel like, so this is an interesting topic because some people truly think that like, all right, cool. Like guys are just not playing defense. We're just, we we don't have people out there that's hustling and really want to stop guys. I think right now it's the hardest to play defense has ever been in NBA history, mm-hmm. mainly because of one, I mean, obviously, you know, there has been rule changes to kind of favor offensive players. Players are obviously getting smarter with analytics and things like that, even as far as getting to the free throw line, making it easy for themselves. Um, right now, players are more efficient than they've ever been. Like, you don't see a lot of those like long twos, those mid range shots is really getting to the basket or shooting threes. We're taking efficient shots. And the fact that right now the shooting, as far as just in general on teams, is the best it's ever been. So spacing wise, it is so hard to actually stop guys. Like I don't think it's I don't think it's like guys don't want to play defense or not bought in on the defensive end. I think it's literally the fact that like it's you cannot stop some of these guys. But some of these watch some of these games and don't listen. Don't listen to a lot of the, the media that's talking about like like even like the Luca Hawks game. They were trying. Like it's not like oh. Bro, they show one clip on Twitter of him getting an open layup, and it's like, Hawks are not even trying. They just let him go to the basket. And not to cut you off, but that exact clip that I know you're talking about, bro got sealed on like, at the elbow, or not the elbow, like the low block to yeah. let Luka get around. What do you, He can't contest that shot. So right. that's not even like not a lack of defense. It's good offensive schematic to give him an open layup there. But right. keep going. I got a lot to say about – that game in particular. Like I said, I really just think at this point, it is as hard as it's ever been to actually play defense on these guys because these guys are more skilled than they've ever been. Like you said, take into account that it feels like everybody can shoot now. Everybody can shoot. Um, everyone is a tough shot maker. Um, and the fact, like, 
some of the shots that Luca was hitting, and I'm just talking about that game specifically, like these step back threes from three sets behind the three point line, that's not normal, bro. Like that's right. not normal to to make consistently. So, um, I think it's less of the fact that guys can't like or don't want to play defense, and the fact that, bro, these guys are as, as skilled as they've ever been in the NBA, can pretty much score from all over the court. So it just makes it hard to actually defend these guys. So, and especially a lot of these guys really are their systems as well. Like everything kind of runs through Luca in general. So when he has it going, it's like you can't really stop that guy. Same thing with Joel Embiid, even with Giannis. It's like Giannis is an athletic freak. So to stop him from getting to the basket is a task in itself. So when he has it going, you know what I mean? It's it's tough to stop a lot of these guys. So I really just think the fact that a combination of the spacing now in today's game and the fact that guys are more skilled than they've ever been scoring the basketball. That along with you know analytics guys taking better shots, the guys focusing on efficiency more often, um, that like leads to you know higher scoring games. So I don't think it's a I don't think it's a matter of guys just not wanting to play defense. You covering like you're covering it perfectly. I <laughs> every single nuance that I feel like was left out of this discussion from some of the largest media outlets, like looking at Stephen A on the NBA pre-show like the day or two after the Luca game happened, him being like, what happened in Atlanta is disgraceful. They need to be, you know, discussed it with their defense. Like when you think about that team personnel wise, also uh, like Luca put up 73 on them. Steph just dropped 60 on them last night. They're not a great defensive team. Right. Like look at the whole totality of all the games that we listed out. Cat 60, 62, 63, that's against Charlotte, one of the worst teams in the NBA. D-Book 62 was a loss against the Pacers, one of the worst, actually the worst defensive team in the NBA by defensive rating. I don't know if that's changed or last time I looked, they were. Mm -hmm. um, Embiid with the Spurs. Embiid against the Spurs, one of the worst teams. Uh, Giannis 60, also against the Pacers. So right. it's like these super high scoring games, yeah, you can have an issue with the defense, but it's happening against the worst defense. It's not like dudes are just going out here against the freaking the best teams in the NBA night in, night out, and just lighting them up for 60, 70 plus. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy if they're even if they're doing that against the bad teams, to your point, because of the way that offense has evolved, like you said, the spacing, the analytics. Um, and again, the way that the game is how, how it's been geared, even from a, a rule perspective or how it's officiated. Um, like there's so many different things I think that are contributing to this, that for some people to come out and boil it down to something as easy, just like, Oh, guys aren't giving effort on defense. Like I promise you, these are some of the best scores we have ever seen. Forget just right now. We've ever seen play the game of basketball. People are not about to just lace their shoes up and be like, yeah, he's going he's gonna to give me 70 tonight and I'm just going to let it happen. Right. I promise you they're, they're trying. When P.J. Tucker got interviewed after he was guarding KD in that, that Bucks, uh net series, mm -hmm. he was like, you, he literally said his mentality has to be you have to think every single possession as it's the first possession of the game. He could have 47 points. And in his mind, it's like, I'm not letting you score on this one. Because you can't. You, you, they're going to get their shots off. They're going to score. Um, there's only so much you can do in that sense um, to try to limit some of the, the most elite scores that, that we've ever seen. Um, but but going back to specifically that Hawks game, uh, like I said, they already are not the best defensive team. Um, and it wasn't even like Luka was forcing his points. They started doubling him to basically start the fourth quarter and getting the ball out of Luka's hands. And he just would hit the open man every time and it right. would result in points for the Mavericks. Right. Um, if he honestly, like he could have had 80, if we're being honest, if he wanted to gun a little bit harder, Facts. even down the stretch, uh, he was giving the ball up uh, when they were doing the foul game. He could have got probably four or five more points just off of free throws. 100%. So like, he's not even, you know, out here just gunning, trying to put up the big numbers. It was a close game, and when they started doubling to get the ball out of his hands, he just made the right basketball play, and it resulted in them winning the game. Um, and even against, uh, like with the Devin Booker 60-point game or 62-point game against the Pacers, Aaron Neesmith, is, he's trying. I promise you he's, he's trying. He's working, bro. He, he gives some working. of Right. He gives some of the best defensive effort I see out of any role player across the league. 
Easily. He's trying. It's just Devin Booker. And sometimes when guys are hot, they're hot. Like, it's, it's a combination of so many things. And it's honestly, it, it's insulting to the players to just be Facts. like, ah, it's, it's, it's an effort thing. You know, like, guys are trying. Like, we, we really need to use context in these conversations, understand what we're watching, and you cannot just box score read. And, and develop your narrative off of that because that's, that's not what's happening. I promise you the Hawks were not just like, well, Lucas is going to get his 70. They were trying not to let him do that. It's just Luca. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, people I, – I really like how you said that you, it's almost disrespectful to the actual player scoring because it's like you're not giving him any credit. You're not you're not admitting at the fact that, bro, we're watching some of the best scores you've ever seen, and I think it's a problem – because they're comparing errors. It really comes down to you comparing errors. Like, looking back mm -hmm. at the old 80s and 90s, like, oh, a hard-nosed defense. It's like, no, bro, It's the game has changed. The spacing is completely different. The way guys attack, the way guys want to score the basketball is completely different. The, right. the only guy I know, not only, obviously, but the main guy I know that really is like, listen, I'm getting my points in the mid-range game, obviously with the free throws and driving to the basket. But when mainly with the mid-range, is Shea. That's the main guy who I know that's really, like, playing kind of, inside out to an extent like don't really mm. look for threes everybody else bro with analytics it is smarter to either get to the basket or to or to shoot a three and they're right. just doing it efficiently so it's like it's you can't compare it to an era where guys are the main thing they're trying to do is one get to the basket or they're trying to get a mid-range shot they're not mm -hmm. even thinking about the three-point shot because that's just like a it's an add-on it's not like a necessity now it's right. that's part of basketball that's part of the game like bro if you're not shooting threes i'm not gonna lie you probably don't have a good chance of winning basketball games or at least yeah. going far as far as like actually contending. So it's just it's really just part of the game now. And I don't think people realize that as far as the game being or game evolving. They keep comparing it to how it used to be. And it's just it's not like that anymore. Yeah. And like I said earlier, looking at the landscape of the games that this happened in, we still throughout the season have seen relatively low scoring games when good teams have played each other. Like, off the top of my head, the Thunder played the Timberwolves, I think, and the Nuggets in, like, a, a little two, like two, three-day stretch. Um, and their, the game against the Timberwolves, they won 102-97, to 97, was tight the whole way down the line. And they played the, they played the Timberwolves again shortly after that, was 107-101. to 101, And they played the Nuggets in the game after that, and they won 105-100. to 100. So it's not like every single game is out here – 150 to 145 like all-star right. game we're just sitting here spraying it's not hawks versus pacers every night right but there are those teams in the league who they they have to do that like they have to get into a shootout because they can't rely on their defense but like you just said the same way that if you're not out here shooting threes you can't really expect yourself to be a championship contender historically we've seen if you cannot bolster down minimally a top 10 defense, but really like a top five defense, you're not a championship contender either. Not so these aren't even teams that they're not even teams that are, are pushing for that just based on their current play and what we've seen historically. Um, so I, I don't feel like there's a need for massive crazy changes. That I feel like I've seen people start to call for, like we've got to make, you know, and honestly, we can kind of pivot into the officiating because I think that's also a large part of this conversation that that people have talked on or talked about. Um, but people are wanting to see changes on how the game is called from a drawing fouls perspective. Because again, a lot of these guys, Joel being probably the biggest one, uh, gets a lot of his points from the free throw line on a nightly basis. I think in that the seventy point game that he had, he was shot twenty six or twenty eight free throws, somewhere, somewhere something like that. Me. Um, so yeah, he's getting like 20, 24, somewhere around their points of his 70 at the, at the free throw line. Are there times where I'm watching games and I'm, I see the fouls that are being called and I, I, I don't like it. I don't think that should be a foul. Even if that's again, how the rules are, it's being officiated correctly, but it's just personally, I disagree. Yeah. I, I feel like everybody should agree on that. Mm -hmm. The biggest one I see is when you see players driving and they put their shoulder into somebody and do that little head snap back. Like they got hit and they get a foul call. Like that's such an unnatural movement. It would be different if you were pulling up and really shooting and you get the foul or not. 
but a lot of times they just flail out of control and get the foul call. And what do you want the defender to do in that situation? Even if they're sliding their feet, you know, they may not be perfectly square to the basket. It just seems like a, that's a call that I feel like we should try to phase out. But for the most part, flopping is, is there. It exists. But I don't feel like there needs to be massive changes to how refs are officiating games. I don't think that is as big of a contributor as people are making it out to be with how the scoring has kind of jumped up this year. Mm-hmm. I, I'm interested to know what you think about it. Cause I, I've seen a lot of people really complain. Um, and obviously like they call guys like Embiid or Harden, you know, for years have been like free throw merchants of how they're able to get so many points in a game. But, but like, what do you feel like the state of NBA officiating is when it comes to how much people are able to, to score this season? I mean, honestly, I really just think guys are smarter, smarter than they ever been as far as like, mm-hmm manipulating you know the way the rules are you know what i mean because honestly foul baiting i guess wasn't really a thing if we're talking about like just it was like years ago guys now it's like it's all right and it also plays into the fact that guys are more skilled than they've ever been because like you look at a guy like mb right there's plenty of possessions where bro mb can get whatever shot he wants he can get the ball at the elbow he's knocking that down he can get to the basket he can body you he can do whatever he wants so it's like you have to play him for so many different things, and then eventually you're going to get yourself out of position to the point where he can kind of manipulate you for a foul call. Now, like you said, granted, there are times where I'm like, uh, and is running into a guard and flopping, and it's like, all right, come on, bro, what are we doing? But there, right. there, a lot of the times when you're watching some of them guys, him, Embiid, Shea, they're legitimately getting fouled because he's so good at manipulating you, getting you out of position because you mm-hmm. have to guard so many different things from him, and then he uses that to his advantage and then gets the foul call that way. So yeah. as far as um changing the way it's officiated, I, it's really not much you can do. I don't think it's like a – I really don't think it's like a huge, huge problem. And, again, once we go into, like, the playoffs, when teams are smarter, teams are, you know, reading the scouting report, they're playing you – playing strictly this team. They know exactly yeah. what you're trying to do. You obviously don't see it as much versus when you just play a random team on a Tuesday and mm-hmm. then he's able to kind of – you're like, you don't – you haven't seen this team for, like, months – and mm-hmm. he's just kind of manipulating you, you know, using you to his advantage to get to the foul line. So I think it's really not that big of a deal because, like I said, later in the playoffs, when defenses are better, when teams are better, when teams are playing smarter, you don't really see it as much. And it's the same thing with those big, those those top, uh, the high scoring games like we were talking about. Like when we get later into the playoffs, you don't see guys go for 70, <laughs> like 80, 80. You don't see that because teams are better, teams are smarter, teams are locked right. down. So I just think people have to. Like I said, give more credit to the actual player. Give more credit to the person scoring the basketball. And realize, bro, if we're playing the Pacers, who are the worst divas in the league, and I'm one of the best scorers, I'm going to get mine. Like, it's just – Yeah. Why, first of all, why is that even a problem, though? I feel like when we, like, like watch, like, football, and if, if it's Christian McCaffrey playing against the Commanders, the worst defense in the league, and he runs for 200, nobody's like, defense nowadays, like, defense. Like, it's like all right. the worst te- defense in the league. This is the best running back in the league. Right. It's, well, it's going to happen. It's right. gonna, yeah, like, come on, bro. So if it's the same thing with basketball, bro, if it's the worst defense, if they can't guard, they can't guard on the perimeter. And I have Devin Booker right here on a heater. What do you What, what, do, what do you bro? think is going to happen? Right. And it's like, it's like, it'd be different if he was getting wide open layups and just no one contesting everything. You don't like watching tough shots. You don't like watching guys like, really on fire Mm -hmm. knocking down every shot they take even if it's a tough shot you know what i mean um seeing people dip into their bag it's like i don't get why that's even a problem so to me it kind of just doesn't make sense just from a fan perspective of why you would not want to watch that because watching like lucas watch watching lucas score 70 watching d book score 60 watching him be watching Giannis, like i I enjoyed watching them games but i didn't i didn't watch it and was like this is ruining the game of basketball like Every single one of those games you just mentioned to were close down the stretch. The biggest gap was in beat. And I think they still was like a, like they just were hanging around. Like the Spurs were hanging around like 10 ish points down the mm-hmm. stretch before MB got subbed out. But the Devin Booker lost that game. That he put up 62. In. Right. Uh, it was a Hawks, the Mavericks Hawks game. That was like a four, three point game. It was close. It was close later down like, the stretch, bro. Especially right, with, Trey, yeah. Yeah, it was oh, like yeah. Trey Young hit that that like a step back three, crazy mad far to like cut it to three or four points, mm-hmm. and they had to play the foul game to end the game out. Like 
these are not even instances where guys are like stuffing, just like padding their own scoring stats. They like they have to put up these points. They're close games. Cat put up 62 and got benched and they lost. Like it, that was the only one that was like, damn, bro. He was uh, he was out here kind of chucking. <laughs> that, that was the only yeah. one, but I see I hundred percent see what you mean. I did see somebody say if you had to guess an NBA player to go off for a career high and like still find a way to get benched, who would it be? And they were like, Cat seems like he would have he would have been the guy. One unfortunately he's talented enough to do that, but dumb enough in the same aspect yeah. to really to get benched down the stretch. So that's it's so true. But yeah. I understand you hit the nail on the head. The biggest thing about that the how people view the officiating in terms of wanting changes to like sway the game back in favor at least to give the defense a little bit more tools but realistically what change would you make are you about to bring back hand, hand checking? checking i was about to say what is yeah I don't are, get, are you going to take sure. out three seconds in the paint like w- what real rule change are you going to do that makes sense here like, cause you could bring back hand checking, I, I guess, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't, like, what is that really doing for the game? Cause like you said, when you get to the playoffs, guys are not doing this. The whistle gets tighter. Like you said, the, the biggest thing guys can actually lock in on, not even just an opponent. If you're like, nah, this is my matchup for this seven game series. You really get to lock in on a guy's tendencies. Mm-hmm. All of his counters. If he has the ball on the left wing and a triple threat, he likes to do this. So I'm going to take away this. And if he doesn't get this, he likes to counter with it. Like there is a mind game that gets to go on in the playoffs that just doesn't happen when the Celtics are going up against the Hornets on a Tuesday night. Like you just don't have the time to prepare. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not at the point where I feel like there's a problem here. Like I said, there's so much that goes into why people are putting up putting up more points. Um, I think that the offenses, like you said, are completely different than what they looked like so long ago. And I like what you mentioned about having to add context into like comparing eras, because I feel like when you do that, like if I look back to like the dead ball era, right, which is like the late '90s to the early 2000s, like right around the time that Jordan like fully retired from the Bulls. Um, to like, I think like 98 to like 04, some, sometime around there guys that were able to put up like 25, 26, 27 points a night in that era where you got two bigs, no spacing, the paint is clogged Mm -hmm. guys like Kobe, T-Mac, AI, that understanding that context makes it even more impressive. Even if just their raw counting stats, like. Yeah, Kobe's averaging 27 and Bede is averaging 36 this year. Does that mean that in Bede's season this year is that much more impressive than Kobe's? Like, not necessarily when you add that type of context in. That might not be the best, like, comparison to make, but you get what I'm trying to say. No, no, no. You can't just compare those those counting stats that way. 100%. um, Because the era is different. We're in a different era where because of the spacing – um, because of analytics, because of the way that guys have played, because of the styles that coaches use, like – Bro, teams are running lineups a lot of times. Still, no centers. Just a bunch of floor spacers. Right. Pacers be running Obi Toppin at the five sometimes. Like, there's just so much space. The game is faster. There's more possessions. People take better high-quality shots. People understand the value of the three-point shot. There's just so much that goes into it. But, like you said, who doesn't like – like, if you – I feel like if your first reaction is seeing guys put up 60 or 70 and it's like, oh, this is crazy. This is bad. NBA got to do something about this. Like, <laughs> like what I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I, I don't understand that. It does, bro, I all, listen, I say it all the time. And it goes back to when you said, like, what rule would you actually implement to kind of help the defense out? I guarantee you if they, I don't know, they figure something out, find a way to, you know, change the rules where defense people are locking up, locking up and the scores are 85, 90 all the time. Dudes would be pissed and be like, game is so boring, bro. Nobody can hit shots. Nobody can score. Right. And it goes back to saying what I always say is NBA fans don't like basketball. Like, they don't like, bro, NBA fans don't like basketball. Like you said, if you see somebody drop 60 and you're like, 
bro, what is this? What do you mean, bro? I see somebody drop the shit. I'm like, yo. And if I missed the game, I'm like, damn, mad I missed it. Let me go watch, rewatch right. the game, watch the highlights, watch something. I'm not like, oh my god, the game needs to, ch- to change. It's like, I don't dudes don't like basketball, and that's the biggest thing because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you do to change stuff. There's always gonna be a problem with everything. There's always gonna be people are scoring too much. People are not scoring enough. Like, th- there's gonna be a problem no matter what you do. So to me. I don't see no reason to change anything as far as mm-hmm. like defensively or like to to cater to defense. You like it's hard. It's harder to defend, but teams do it. Teams do play great defense. Yeah, the it'd be different teams, if it was like if it was in the playoffs and dudes are dropping seventy in the playoffs. Then we got a real issue. Then I'm like, whoa, all right, time out. <laughs> like some right. these are the best defensive teams in the league. These are the best teams in the league, and dudes are just having their way. Then it's like, all right, cool. But even then, my first reaction, like if it was one person, I'd be like, "Damn, he's just nice." If Luca, bro, if Luca goes into the playoffs and he averages like fifty for a series, I'm like, "Bro, this is just one of the best scores we've ever seen in my life." That's, he could really be capable of it. Is the that's crazy what I'm part. saying? Now, if it was like he doing that, then we got J Dub doing averaging for right. it. I'm like, "All right, hold on, what are, right. what, what are we doing here? Something got to give." But my first reaction is not something needs to change. It's like, wow, that player, that score is nice at basketball. That's my first mm-hmm. reaction every time. Yeah, I unless something happens in the postseason, I don't think there's there's any issue here. Facts. I really do just think if I if you had to try to pinpoint it to just two or three things, offenses are more evolved and advanced than they've ever been, uh, and players scorers are better than they've ever been in the history of the NBA. And there's more of them. That's the thing, too. There's more people who mm -hmm. are capable of pulling up those crazy numbers. Like, comparing it to the other eras when there's only a handful of guys who are even talented enough offensively to put up those crazy numbers, like a Kobe, like a Melo, T-Mac, like whoever. Like, there's more of those guys in today's game, so it's going to seem like like it happens way too often. It's like, no, bro, more people are just – they're more talented nowadays, bro. And it goes back to even like roster construction. Like before you had guys who were like a team was like, oh, you had a point guard that was just strictly like facilitating. You got your mm-hmm. scoring two, you got your defensive three that brings you nothing offensively. Like his job is just to play defense. Then you got your two bigs. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one guy is gonna be the scorer. Like that's how the team is constructed. Now it's like there's a bunch of different guys who can do a bunch of different things and are more versatile and able to yes. score. So it just seems like you know it's getting out of hand with reality. No, like everyone on the court now has the ability most of the time to shoot, to put the ball on the floor, to score, to do different things. It's not like this guy is a defensive specialist and that's it. And he brings me nothing offensively. So really the game has changed. The way people construct their rosters has changed. It's just a different era of basketball, bro. And people got to get, get with it or I don't know, watch hockey. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Get with it or get left. We're going to leave it on that. Full all-star rosters did come out last week. Um, so we're going to start off in the East. Starters, we, we already walked through it on the pod, but again, that's Giannis, Embiid, Tatum, uh, Halliburton, and Damian Lillard. The reserves got announced last week, specifically not the, the whole roster, just the reserves, but to fill out the roster is Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown, Bam Adebayo, Julius Randle, Tyrese Maxey, and Paolo to fill out the 12-man roster out East. In the West, the starters are LeBron, KD, Jokic, Luka, and Shea. The reserves that got announced were Anthony Edwards, Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, Paul George, and Carl Anthony Towns. Like we thought it would be, the West was going to be – there are going to be a lot of guys that get left off who immediately – This sucks, gonna, bro. They're going to be snubs. They're going to be this, snubs. This sucks, bro. League sucks. How can da da get – how can da da Bro, it's it was bound to happen, bro. Yeah, it was bound to happen. And even if, like, going back to what we said before, even if you add one or two roster spots on both sides, this conversation is always going to happen because because somebody got to be the, the the first person not picked. You know, like that's going mm-hmm. to to happen. Um, but l- let's just let's just get into who you think some of the the biggest snubs are, um, because. The first one that jumped out to me when I saw the West reserves immediately was the fact that there are no Sacramento Kings that made the All-Star game initially. Now, looking looking at the West roster, 
Um, you do have – actually, are all these guys – everybody here I think is going to play. Now I look at it. I don't think anybody's hurt. Mm, nope. Everybody should be. Yeah, there actually might not be any injury replacements out west. And not saying that anybody won't want anybody to get injured, but just the east is probably going to have three or four injury replacements um, with some people that have gotten hurt since the it's been finalized. But the fact that the Kings don't have any all stars as the five seed with the season that De'Aaron Fox is happening or is having and the season that Demonis Sabonis is having, it's tough. That is. Tough, and if there are no injury replacements, the fact that neither of them are going to be all stars this year it feels wrong, to be honest. Like, but Thanks. again, there's there's just not enough spots currently on the roster, and when all star getting voted as an all star or being labeled an all star, like that's something that ends up in legacy debates, like when guys' careers are said and done. So it's not like this is a oh whatever type of thing, like. That matters to the players. I'd imagine it matters like in how they're regarded when their career is over. So I guess it kind of ties back into what we said, like players are better than they've ever been. So that's, I feel like why we keep reaching a point year in and year out where there are so many guys who are all-star caliber players putting up all-star caliber numbers and aren't able to get in the game, but there just aren't enough spots, bro. But like I said, I, little tangent there, but I can't believe there are no Kings on this this West roster. Honestly, the All-Star game is really just a popularity contest, if we're just being honest. Because, like I, like you said, the fact that there's no Kings, to me, is kind of crazy. Like, I feel like Sabonis or Fox could have made it over a guy like Paul George. But then again, it's like Paul George is a more popular player than some of these other guys. Even the fact that, like, like Dame, we talked about Damian Lillard being a starter. Not granted, mm-hmm. the guy still made it. Like Brunson and D. Mitch still made it. Right, Donovan Mitchell should have been over Damian Lillard. Uh, Jalen Brunson, I could, I would have put over Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard arguably is playing right now like the worst out of every guard that made this list. I saw a lot of people who had Damian Lillard like borderline not making their All Star ballot or just didn't make their All Star ballot. Like he was either their like wild card spot or he just was like that first guy out. I mean, and I just he has a case to do that. So like the fact that he's right. a starter is like that's a popularity thing. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. but I mean that was kind of to be expected. But like, yeah, like I said, the Kings not being on here, Trey Young getting disrespected two years in a row to me is nuts. Like I I, I thought at least the fact that last year he didn't go on that like they would make it a point to be like, all right, cool, you definitely get a reserve spot. He's going to make it because, you know, like I said, I believe there's – who's not playing? Uh, MB's not playing. Halley's not mm-hmm. playing. Uh, somebody else, I forgot who. So uh, I think Ran- – isn't Randall hurt now? Yeah, Randall has the dislocated shoulders. That's three right there. Right. So um, he's he he's going to get in. But it's like yeah. the fact that he had to get in that way to me just is kind of crazy. Just mm-hmm. Mainly because of the fact that they did him dirty last year. You know, and his stats are one of – an all-star. Like, I think he was, what, 27 and 10. Um I was, and I've seen people try to make make the case of like, all right, like they're not winning, they're not that great of a team. When it's like, when has that been the criteria for an all star? Like, it's never like you never had to be like the top. Like, granted, you get more of a nod, I feel like, but that shouldn't right. be like a crazy knock if your team is like not playing like at that. The top of that the feels like the only criteria for Trey Young. <laughs> like, Seriously. everything else, Isaiah Thomas say, I, I met the criteria. He's checking yeah. every other box. He doesn't have the full team success and the record for it, but but it's like, all right, cool. If that's the case, Steph is the 12th seed. You know, LeBron, what I, mean? Like, I mean, the Lakers LeBron, got two all stars. They're not even in the top eight either. I'd about to say they're not good. So it's like the thing is like you're moving the goalposts for certain players. It's like, why right. does that why is the criteria for Trey Young? All right, cool. No, you got to have a, a, a winning team when it's like, like you said, Lakers, we suck. The Warriors, they really suck. So it's like mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't get how a guy like that can get uh get knocked because of that. And the other guys really don't have that same problem. So to me, I just think it's tough. I feel like he should have got a nod, but against I don't know what the league has against Trey Young. I really don't get it. Like I feel like he gets like crazy disrespect and everything. But I don't know, man. It is what it is. Yeah, I, Trey Young is Again, like you said, he should make it with three injury replacement spots. Look like they're they're going to open up. Um, 
So he'll, he'll get he'll get it, but I it's think not like he this. had a le- <laughs> right. He had a legitimate case to. I think I had him over Lillard in my All Star ballot. I think they both ended up making it, but I think I had Lillard as the the wild card. Mm-hmm. Like. I don't know. You could pick hairs about it. Obviously, Damian Lillard is Damian Lillard. I feel like Troy Young is having a better season. And the stats that he put up, yeah, he puts up night in, night out are all star stats. To your point, these teams, Lakers got two all stars. Steph Curry made the all star game. They don't have good win loss records. Right. So that one is crazy. Um, I, another one that I've seen people debating and i honestly want your thoughts on it timberwolves got two all-stars anthony edward was the obvious one pat gets the nod over gobert cool the argument here is that the timberwolves hold their hat on the defensive side of the ball rudy anchors that side of the ball he's a dpoy finalist probably the favorite um but he doesn't get the nod it goes to cap do you feel like they should have flip flopped that, um, or did they they get it right with getting Cat in the game? I say should have flip flopped it. Like I said, you know I'm not the biggest Rudy Gobert fan, and I still have Rudy. You had Rudy on your ballot yeah. when we did it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I had Rudy on my ballot because I just think it's cra- to me looking at it from a standpoint of like, bro, this guy's gonna be the most defensive, the most valuable defensive player in the entire NBA. His team is the best defensive team in the league, and that is solely because of the addition of, I mean, obviously, you know, J.D. JD McDaniels, Anthony Edwards taking a step up on the defensive end. But mainly it's like, all right, Rudy Gobert anchors that side of the uh, that side of the ball. You could say he's more valuable to the team than a guy like Carl Anthony Towns. But mm-hmm. the fact that Cat is an offensive player, Rudy Gobert is a defensive player, and stuff like this, I mean, offense is always going to overtake defense, I feel like, because like, a guy averaging, what is he, like 22 and 8, is going to overtake Rudy Gobert because his – I mean, obviously, the blocks and the rebounds is, is, like, counting stats. But as far as, like, the impact, it's not as cute to the eyes, I guess, as looking at a guy averaging 20-something points. You know what I mean? So right. I feel like they could have flipped thought just because the value of Rudy Gobert has been better, I feel like. But in a, in something like this, am I surprised that this happened? No, not, not at all. But I do think it's kind of crazy. If a guy's going to win defensive player of the year, he's not even going to be an all-star. It's, it's kind of nuts. Same, even same thing with like Sabonis, what we were talking about. Like, I think he's like what fifth in MVP voting or something. I seen somewhere he was like, yeah, fifth it's in like MVP top, voting. He's top seven, something like that. Either way, and he's not an all star. I guess that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. <laughs> like... it, it doesn't. It literally doesn't make sense. So he's the seventh most valuable player in the league this year, but he's not. What is it? The twenty fourth. Well, technically twelfth best player. You know, in his conference. Right, in his conference. So those don't add up. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And it's tough. It's tough. Honestly, Cat, Gobert, Sabonis, are any of them guys that you would want to see in an all-star game? I saw uh, Kenny and numbers on the board talking about that. Like, no. <laughs> They're yeah. not guys that you like are, like, thrilled to see in an all-star game. But we got to be fair, though. We got to, like, we right. got to be fair. You know what I mean? Like, great, like. Look, there's, there's some bums I would love to see in an all-star game. Like, not bums, but, like, there's some guys who are damn sure shouldn't make an all-star team. I would right. like to see him in the game because, you know, they might be flashy, you know. Might go mm-hmm. – imagine Malik Monk in, like, an all-star type game. He's not an all-star, but you got to be – you know, you got to be fair. You can't just go off of, like, who would I rather see. Because yeah. if it was up to me, AR being here, Vando, I had a whole Yo. Lakers in here. <laughs> not up to me. Vando. Absolutely nah. <laughs> not. <laughs> bro, you don't like defense in an all-star game, bro? When they lock it in that fourth quarter, Vando going to be – he going to be on it. You're right. That's true. That's true. And they but, got that – was it the 24 points you got to get? Uh, <laughs> yeah, in, in yeah, the fourth quarter, he can be locking down. Sea gun guard everybody, but nah, it really is just I I just think it's the fact that you gotta be fair to people who deserve it over people you'd rather see in it. Was Derek White snubbed? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he was not. <laughs> I was you know, I was thinking about that because that conversation is funny. Um, and I get it, you know, the impact, mm-hmm. but especially like we just talked about the way there's too many talented people in the league. If Derek White did what he's doing right now five, seven years ago, he's definitely an all star. Isn't that? Yeah, for sure. They'd have probably have four all stars. Is he, though? I think, bro, what was that year when uh, the Hawks had like four? They, you know what I'm what, talking about? 
Well, well, all right. The, and so, it was the one seed, just like the Celtics. Because they had – it was Jeff Teague, it was Al Horford, Corver. Cole Millsap, and Corver. Corver was like the fourth guy. Mm. What was Kyle Corver putting up that year? But his – I'm saying – I don't know the, the exact stats, but as far I, I'm as I'm about to look it up because now they, I don't know. They made it because they were the one seed and it was really off impact. Derek White is the best role player in the league, has been an absolutely great defender. Probably gonna make an all defensive team. Like, I think I think he averaged over like 16 points a night. Nothing, yeah. definitely nothing too crazy. But just saying back at that time. The the All Stars was averaging what 20, 22, 24 points, yeah. 25. It's not like, bro, this guy, had, I'm looking at a 35 points per game, 31, 34, 28. Like, he had no chance in this type of era, but he had no chance to make it. Nah, bro. <laughs> Kyle Corver was putting up 12 points a night and made the All Star game. See? He, Derek White would have 100% made it back then. That's crazy. I said, bro, it's just a, it's the difference, bro. It's a different era, bro. They like them being the one seed and like they what they was a 61 year for them with Budenholzer. Like, I feel like that just goes back to the point that we should not be weighing all star selections that heavily on your team record, bro. Facts. There's no way. It shouldn't matter whatsoever. I don't think. I don't think like it should like maybe a slight advantage, but like, bro, if a guy's averaging like, bro, if a guy was averaging 33 points a night and his team was the 10th seed, he should still be an all-star starter. It doesn't matter. He's he's the, one of the best players in the league. Right. It's about identifying the best players, not players on the best teams. Best player, period. You can't add mm-hmm. an extra extra check mark for them to have to, to get. Right. Yeah. Average 12 points a game, shooting 49% from three. He was sparking the all star He was. That's he was crazy. Sparking I don't know if that was. Yeah, forty nine point two percent from three on the season. Bro, was if he shot it, there was a basically fifty percent chance that shit was going. He in. he. This is crazy. He he made a better percentage on three point shots than two point shots. That's ridiculous. I mean, he probably shot. I mean, he didn't shoot more, but like he, he shot. He shot two twos a game, but like. Right, okay. <laughs> you made 49% from three and 40, was it 47% from two? That was nuts. Yeah. But so he wasn't even 50, 40, 90. I will he say also has, he, he was 89.8% from the free throw line. Snubbed. <laughs> but no, it, it's, it's, it's funny, though, because, like, if Derek White made the all-star team, bro, over, like, let me just see. I don't even know, bro. Yeah, probably. while you look at while you look into one thing I do want to add before people try to take all this out of context, everybody that made the game is deserving of the game. Like facts, that is facts, what facts. I think when people do these snub conversations, like, oh, he should have made it, he should have made it, he should have made it. Some people really get up in arms and mad about it. Who are you taking out? Who are you taking out that you're gonna tell me doesn't deserve to be an all-star on either of these teams? Bro, I seen there was somebody was like, bro, Fox should have made it over Steph. I seen a video where the dude was like. In his argument, to be fair, he was the guy that was like, yo, bro, like, I value winning. You know what I mean? I don't agree, but he was like, I value mm-hmm. winning. If you're going to have Trey Young out, Steph is the 12th seed. That's, just, that's what he said. And I was like, I mean, I don't agree, right. but I at least you're consistent with, you know yeah. what I'm saying, your little, your criteria or whatever. Right. But he was like, yo, bro, Fox should have made it over Steph. But I don't know. Like you said, it's. People, that's the problem. People want to put people in, but don't want to take nobody out. Yes. <laughs> you got to take somebody out if you're going to put somebody in. That's when people yeah. will be like, yo, bro, this, this so-and-so is the top five player in the league and, well, across all sports. It's like, all right, what's your list? And you don't want to take nobody out of it. You can't have 10 top five players in the league, bro. Yeah, if you're going to be in our IG or our TikTok comments disagreeing with us and we ask you, to, if we're doing a ranking and you don't like the ranking, you think it's crazy, Drop that let list. me see your list, bro. Why? Why when I ask for the list, I don't get a list, bro. And you never get that. You never get. The <laughs> I list. never I need get the list, list, bro. I need your list, and I need you at your at the bottom your criteria, so I know if you're being consistent. Because dudes will say, like I said, they'll say one thing about you winning here with this player, but this guy team sucks. It's like I right, I turn the blind eye. So people not consistent across their criteria right. for stuff. If you put together an argument that I disagree with, I'm not, and it's tough because that's part of the problem with. 
the social media space and just sports discourse in general, so much of it is like, now nah, if I disagree, you got to hear it and you wrong. And this is why, and blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, if you just say something I don't agree with, but I can see how you put it together or why you view it the way you did. What the guy said about having De'Aaron Fox in over Steph because they didn't put Trey Young in, like, fair. You making a point and it makes sense. You're not just talking out your ass, basically. Mm. So, like, Y'all gonna do all that in the comments, bro. You better be ready to to at least back it up. And I'm not gonna come at you crazy if you just back it up. We can have civil discussion about sports, bro. Bro, there's plenty of times where a dude would comment like, "I disagree because," and it just says why. Not like it's just in a this is why. Like I feel this way, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I see what you're saying, but blah 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 blah. Right. And even if we just agree to disagree, it's like that's fine. All right. And no one's gonna have, and not everyone's gonna have the same opinion on stuff, bro. Like, like that, people feel like, bro, because I feel a certain way, everybody has to feel that way, or it's a problem. Like, bro, people are gonna feel differently, bro, and that's okay. People need to learn that you can disagree, to disagree. There's no problem. Mm-hmm. But I'm Every always single- right. Though. All my takes is right. I don't know yeah, y'all talking about all my takes is right. If you're wrong, if you disagree, you're wrong. Every single comment section don't got to sound like an episode of First Take, bro. It don't. <laughs> it, it don't got to be that. Everyone's love. But and that's people love the debate and love to argue because of those shows, though. That's the main I thing. I know. People always want to argue. I don't like, we don't need it. What do we need to argue for? We don't need to argue every damn time. It's, it's annoying. All right. You can, you can talk and list out your arguments in a way that's not clown stupid. Like, <laughs> you're not really saying anything. The only I will say the time and personally I don't do it regardless. I'm never commenting under nobody's stuff about they take. I really don't care. Yeah. But the only time where I see why people comment is if it's an obvious like um engagement bait type of take. Right. Like, yeah, I don't know if you've seen the video to do <laughs> that was like, bro, if you switch Derek White and Jalen Brunson, yes, <laughs> but he, he immediately got cooked by his co host, exactly. Like. But that's the engagement, baity type of take. Then it's like, right. me personally, I'm not commenting because I know what you're doing, but right. I would see why people would be like, Bro, what are you talking about? Right. That's the only time where I'm like, Okay, I get it because, yeah, some people be bugging. But if it's a, an opinion, it's like a legit one, and you're just wrong, like, I don't care, you're just wrong. Derek White is taller, though. You know what Becky Hammond said. <laughs> he, yeah. he is taller. <laughs> Derek White can lead a team to a championship. I don't know. That's, he, he can lead a team. He, he, he's over 6'2". He fits that criteria. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. So from here on out, you know, if you're going to have an issue with the people on the All-Star team, with the people that got snubbed, and you're going to go as far to really like get mad about so-and-so not making the team, Tell me who they should have made it over and like why? And why? Yeah, why? And it can't just be because they your favorite team, it can't just be because you whatever like is play better. Like, there's got to be some level of objectivity. Um, and going back to what you said about um, the whole Darren Fox not making it, Trey Young not making it, Steph made it, even though the record like part of that happens because I think of how the starters are based on. Was it player voting, media voting, and fan voting, voting, compiling different percentages? And I think the reserves are coach voted. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't even have the same buckets of people voting for the full roster. You're never going to get that kind of consistency consistency throughout why people are picked, which is tough because, honestly, that would make it better and at least – at least if it was consistent, you could clearly point to something. But like you said, it feels like the goalposts are moved for different players. If they're going to do it, though, they def- they have to be – definitely don't make it. Wasn't the years where there was, like, strictly fan voting and it was, like – it was, like, crazy? Like, if you're going to do it, make it, like, a combination of everything. Don't make it strictly coaches, yeah. not strictly fans. Damn sure not strictly fans. It would be terrible. Mm-hmm. And not even strictly players because players be bugging, too. People don't realize players be tweaking. Bro. Some of them don't care that much or like about making yeah. things seriously. Like, and I, honestly, to, to a point, I don't blame them, bro. If I was on the team, if I'm a player on the Celtics, I'm putting Derek White on my all star ballot. 100%. 100%. No question. I put Drew Holiday up there too. I put the whole star in five. Oh, everybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pay, Payton Pritchard on, on my all star ballot if I'm a Celtics player. Like, those are your boys. Like, yeah, yeah. That's right. why I said you cannot do strictly players too because they'd be bugging. Right. You got it. You got to have the mix throughout the entire thing, bro. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited for the All Star Game still. Um, I'm waiting to see. I feel like the only person that's gotten announced for the dunk contest, at least that I've seen, was um, Jaime Jaquez. Have you seen anybody else get put in it this year? No. Mm-mm. Let me see. Let me see. Because I was, they got Wemby's in the skills challenge. Damian Lillard and Jalen Brunson are doing the three point contest, and then they're doing the one on the side with um. Sabrina Inescu and Steph doing a like head to head thing, mm-hmm. and then oh, Mac McClung is coming back. <laughs> oh, the, the G League, yeah, oh, yeah. one on one last year. He hooped uh, though. I ain't gonna. I ain't mad at it. That was the best him. dunk contest in a little while. Uh, matter of fact, contest. book it now. We are live streaming All Star Saturday Night on Playback. Heavy, <laughs> we lit. gotta do that. That would be That's lit. Okay, I'm with it. I'm with it. We can do that. And I'm I'm gonna get my whiteboard. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm with that. That's fire. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. But I'm excited. I, like regardless of the snubs and all that, um, and just the the whole process of how the voting went down. I'm excited for the All Star game. Um, I'm also excited for the trade deadline next week. I'm excited to see what trades happen because we definitely have to do a trade deadline reaction episode. Hundred percent. With that though. Shout out to BDGE. They've been doing this on their channel a ton with old school NFL players, random NFL players. Watching those videos, names be popping up that I haven't heard of in literal years. Like, and it just like unlocks little memories. So I wanted to see if we could do this on the NBA side of things. So let me let me see if I can get this set up real quick. One second. Um, and we are going to, I'm going to show Dame a picture of an NBA role player. Not even necessarily a role player, just an NBA player. Some of them are somewhat new. Some of them are old. Some of them are a little old. Some of them, there's some, it's a good mix in here. I got a mix of some, some names you definitely should get. Some names that are tough. Some names that are like, I don't even, I might just have a, a core memory with them from playing with them on like 2k9 or something mm-hmm. and like the name is just forever in my head um so let me go ahead and get this set up real quick he scared me because i got a bad memory bro he's we gonna scare see, me. I, I i tried to give you the good mix i tried to give you a good mix <laughs> and but you don't know ball how do you not know norris cole dang i didn't even intro the video oh, yet oh, go ahead go ahead go ahead we're this is fine go ahead you you, you one for one you one for one <laughs> um but yeah Need you to name these NBA players based on their picture. Um, I don't know. I feel like 10 seconds feels like a good range. You're not gonna get in 10 there seconds unless I'll be a little lenient. You feel me? If you if you trying to get to the name, I'm not gonna cut you off, but that's cool. 10 10 seconds. I feel like I'll try to break this out. If you can't get at least, and this is not for you, I'm talking to the people watching it, the people on TikTok, Instagram, whatever. If you can't get, mm, let's say at least five casual, casual, because <laughs> it's it's some layups in here. You got if you can't get five, that's casual. Copy. I mean, you get, watch me, me not get five. <laughs> Ten. I mean, you 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 a ball watcher. You can get fifteen. You're a ball knower. Mm, I'm trying to be a All ball right. knower. All right, man. Let's get it. You go twenty for twenty. I got twenty dollars for you. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> There's some bread on it. So you already got the first one. Norris this, Cole. Uh, Norris Cole. Me, oh, hold up. Make sure the John working. There we go. Mm-hmm. Next one. Who is that? Luis Scola. Luis Sco- Bro, Mitty used to be so cash. Money. Money. Mitty used to be so <clears throat> cash. All right. Two for two. Going to number three. Who is that? Uh, Andre Roberson. Andre Roberson, okay, three for three. So okay. I told you I got some layups in here for you. All right, all right, all right. We talking, we right. talking, we talking. Andre Roberson. I almost said, what's up, Alosha? <laughs> Loki. Yo, <laughs> they always are the two <laughs> bro, the two shooting guards in 2K for the Thunder that everybody was subbing out on the starting <laughs> lineup, bro. Thanks. <laughs> Crazy. I think he's playing in um in uh, either Thailand or the Philippines now. So so shout out to him. I seen him at the gym in San Antonio actually not too long ago. So he's still getting that working. Should have ran the ones. 
Low key. He was it's doing true. a workout though. I'm dead. <laughs> uh, all right. Going on to number four. Who is that? Robert Sacre. Come on. Robert I wasn't missing this enough. You, okay. Yo, bro, I see y'all right now. If you, do, if you don't know who this is, you're not a real Lakers fan. I do not care what you say. If you don't know Robert Sacre, you are not a real Lakers fan. Because this is when we sucked. Okay. Okay. Going on to number five. Who is this? Kurt Heinrich. Okay, Captain Kirk, five for five. Oh, so look, look, we already out of casual range. All right, man. Cool. We're not a casual. Let's try to be a ball watcher at least. Let's try to be a ball right. watcher. Captain Kirk himself. <clears throat> Number six, who is that? Brandon Bass. Brandon Bass. I, I Brandon thought you would struggle with that nah, one. Nah, okay? the mini. The mini. Okay. Come on. The, the mini, mini bro. I, bro, I <laughs> promise you on everything I love in 2K, I was green in every single mid range shot with Brandon Bass, bro. <laughs> every shot single one. That shot was okay. money. That was money. Number seven, who is that? Aaron Afualo. Aaron, yo, you're kind of hooping, bro. I thought you would struggle with Listen, some of these. I'm a 2K. You know, I'm a 2K head, bro. Come on. Some of these guys is strictly off 2K. Okay. Okay. Aaron Afualo. Move on to number eight. Who is that? Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson, another yeah. 2K legend, bro. Yeah. yeah, we here. I remember Rockets Ty Lawson. I believe it was Rockets Ty Lawson. Or I'm thinking somebody else. Nuggets Ty Lawson was him. I think might, I'm gonna be thinking somebody. No, I'm thinking. Nah, no, no. Nah, nah. Ty Lawson, I think, was on he, he might have had a stint. But he's not I don't even no, want to I, the Kings too. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. You said Aaron Brooks. I bro, I almost put him up here. <laughs> All right, number nine. Who is that? Light one. Uh TJ Warren. TJ Warren, Mr. Bubble himself. Bubble Jordan. That's Bubble Jordan right there. Bubble Jordan. Crazy. He's not even in the league right now. Nuts. He was on the stuff. Wasn't didn't he get signed to the Suns? People was like, oh, that's a great acquisition, like a great little role player. Mm -hmm. oh, crazy. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. All right. Number 10. You go 10 for 10. Who's that? Ramon Sessions. Ramon Sessions. I had, yeah. I had to throw some Lakers in here for you to test. I'm a ball watcher, man. I'm a ball watcher. Let's try. Let's see okay. if we a ball knower though. Let's see if we a ball I, knower. You you push it for twenty for twenty. You halfway there. Number eleven. Who is that? Steve Novak. Steve Novak. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Another two K shot was money. Three point celebration was crazy. Look at the meme mug, bro. Bro, you look like an ostrich. <laughs> bro, he <laughs> he looks like crazy. You look like you're doing a chicken dance, bro. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on to number 12. Who is that? Come on, man. Antoine Jameson, man. Antoine Jameson, 12 Antoine. for 12. 12 for 12. Who is that? That's not Goodness, Seattle's Twitter. It it is Seattle's I'm like that. Okay. I'm like that. I'm like that. I'm like you try to get me with the no jersey though. You try to get me. No, but no, I kept I kept the hat on so you know we play for the Spurs facts. at least. Facts, facts, um, facts. I knew that would be one that at least made you think of it. <laughs> I hesitated. I, I hesitated. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I think he coaches for the Rockets now too. Shout out to Tiago Splitter. I, I'm, it's, it's crazy, but the biggest memory I have of him is when LeBron really met him at the Stuffed rim. That's one of the shot. craziest blocks ever. Hundred percent. Thirteen for thirteen. Who is that? He might have got me, Ronnie Stuckey. Oh, Ronnie Stuckey, bro. There you go. Come on, man. Come on. You had me in the Stuckey. beginning that his name just popped in my head, Ronnie Stuckey. 14, you know why I know him? 14. You know how I know him, bro? I swear, back in the day, we used to play like 2K. Like, I don't even know. That's probably like 14. was a my career head. He used to piss me off, bro, because he never passed me the ball. He pass the ball? <laughs> he would not pass me the ball. That's, that's how I remember him. Bro, it used to be the worst when you was grinding badges. and Or like you just made this bill. You try and grind your badges. And you were low overall. Your teammate chemistry is low. They don't care about you. You spam <laughs> at X. That, they never pass you the ball. Then you get excessive call for pass. Then they Facts. finally pass you the ball. Bad call for pass. Like, <laughs> it was just bad, bro. Compiling. Bro, I, I thought this was my career, not y'all's career, bro. <laughs> Facts. Uh, all right, 14 for 14. Do you get 15, you're going to be a ball knower and have a chance to go 20 for 20. Let's see if I'm a ball knower, man. Who was that? Why isn't oh Deion Waiters? I was almost Deion said Victor Oladipo for some reason. Mm -hmm. Deion Waiters. 
Deion Waiters, another one of the layups I threw in here. All right, five more for the Whew. perfect 20 ball. Number 16, who's that? Come on, man. Him and Kobe combined for 82 points one night. They did. <laughs> Legendary <laughs> performance. Did Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown, Mr. <laughs> Can't Commit a Post Move to Memory. He's too small. He's got bad hands. He just can't play. He can't play. <laughs> that is crazy, bro. That has got to be the greatest, like, rant in sports talk history. Facts. It's wild because, like, if you told – I was probably, like, 90% of NBA fans, Kwame Brown, what the first thing that came to mind was, that would be immediately what they say, Stephen A. Smith. 100%. Cooking him. 100%. Foul. Absolute violation. Four more. Number 17. Who is that? Hito Turkoglu, baby. Come on, Hito man. Hito Turkoglu. Okay. Come on, man. All right. Maybe I should have made this a little bit harder then. Come on, man. You know, I'm a, listen, I'm a 2K head. I'm a ball watcher. And I'm a, when I played 2K recently, not about years ago, I was a my team guy. So you know the my team be having the gems. Okay. Number 18, who is that? Brandon Rush. Brandon Rush. Hey, come on, man. I'm here. I got two Thanks. more. I'm here, baby. I'm two here. Two more. On. Two more. Come on. Come Brandon on. Rush also used to have a buttery jump shot in 2K. He had a burner. Number 19, who is that? Danny Granger. That's the easy one. Danny Granger. PG before PG. Just Facts. low key. I can't fold on 20. I can't, can't fold, fold on 20. Cannot fold on 20. At number 20, who is that? Shannon Brown. 20 for Shannon 20, Brown. 20 for 20, 20, for 20 man. 20. 20 for 20. I'm not a ball knower. I am the ball knower. We just we put it down. I'm the ball knower. Give me 20 for 20, man. Stop okay. That was fun. All right, now- now, next time we do this, the, the difficulty level is going up. It's going up. I respect, yeah, I respect it. It has to. It has to. I ain't going to lie. It the next to. 20 are going to be crazy, crazy pulls. You are better off. I'm not going to lie. Because you all these are for like 2010, 20 to 2010. Or no, no. No, I'm bugging. 2010s to the like 2020, like in that era. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, you better off doing 2020 to now. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably know more of the <laughs> back then than I do now. I'm just random role players. But. Yeah. Now nah, we here though. We here. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I was trying. I'm. Try- I was trying to keep a balance between like, because like, if you want to be corny, like, yeah, I could throw some dude from like the 80s. Yeah, no, it's I like, that. that's not even gonna be fun for the the, the people on TikTok or Instagram watching it. Like, right. Now this so. is not. This is perfect. The 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 players you got was like, because like a lot of them you should know. Like I say, I think genuinely, I mainly know. I knew all of them because it's a combination of watching basketball. You had a bunch of Lakers up there. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I, I was a 2K head crazy. So that's right. – but if you're just a basketball fan, some of these might slip through your – you know, your, 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 your yeah. noggin. But, yeah. yeah. The Tiago Splitter mm-hmm. one, I was like I, – I thought for sure you might have forgot him, bro. He, he – it stumped me for a minute, but I was like, ah, I know him. I know him. Because even on, on those Spurs team, I feel like your mind immediately goes to obviously the big three. Then you got Danny Green. You got Patty Mills. Like, there's a lot of guys that come off the bench for you. Like, oh, shoot, Tiago Splitter was starting in those series. He was. That, see, that's the thing. Some of them guys, I remember moments. Like like you said, when I said, think Tiago Splitter, same thing. I think of LeBron's block. Mm-hmm. Like, Shannon Brown, I think of the, the – was it the block or the dunk? I think it was, a, I think it was a block. The block that didn't count Kobe on the sideline. Like, Ugh. Yes. See, like, yes, it was the block. Granny Rush, I just remember, like, his shot in 2K. Like, there's some people I just remember, like, certain moments from. So Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 20 for 20, man. 20 for we here. 20. We here, man. We a ball knower. The ball knower. That was fun. That was no, nah, that was fire. We definitely gonna do more of that. Um, 100%. I said, if y'all haven't seen BDG do it, y'all gotta check them out because they be bro the craziest pulls. They be making me remember football players I forgot existed, bro. I ain't gonna lie. If we do football, I gotta do it for you. I'm not gonna know football, bro. Like I know, like I know football, but my memory with players is like, bro. I can't even name. All the offensive linemen on the Steelers right now, like certain people, like I just don't know, bro. I'm not. And what makes it so hard is because in football, it's like we can't really, you can't really see faces like that. That's what I'm saying. And in the best one, I'm putting, I'm putting the faces with the name. It's so easy to do that. Football, I just, it could be somebody I've watched my whole life. I, I'm not gonna know, bro. I'm just not. Sometimes, it's tough. Cause they be showing people, and it's like I, 
I'm trying to gauge based on like the jersey that they wear and just right. like, the time frame. How good is this picture? Is this HD? Like I'm trying yeah, to figure thanks. all that out. Um, and the number, and it's like I sometimes I just I can't know. And then when you say it, it immediately clicks. But it's like I I Facts. can't put those two together. The helmet is like the biggest blocker if I cannot see the face, bro. I will say for me personally, my my basketball history is way better than my football history. Like I think my knowledge, I low-key think my football knowledge is better, but history wise, football, I ain't gonna lie, that just be forgetting. Um it's just hard. Like yeah. I said, it's hard to put faces to, to names and stuff. It's yeah, definitely way, way tougher. I almost threw a um I was gonna throw in it was a screenshot of what I think KG looked like in like 2K1. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna clip the jersey off and see if you could get some face on what he looked like. I'm dead. Uh, so no, that's coming in the next one. Though. Say no more. <laughs> KG. Every game, first 2K player for KG. <laughs> Definitely not gonna be him though. They got gotta spice it. it up. I'm with the Definitely gotta man, spice man. it up. That was fun. Um, did you watch the Pro Bowl flag football game today too? Bro, I watched the whole thing because I was on like babysitting duties. I watched the whole thing, <laughs> the whole every, from start to finish. I watched the whole Pro Bowl. Was it good? I, I didn't catch a second. I was driving and I already was not super interested in watching the flag football game in the first place. I'm not gonna lie, it was like it wasn't crazy. Like I was forced to watch the whole thing. Put it that way. So it's like the skills yeah. champ. For real though, like honestly, like you heard, know my day today. I was forced to watch it. The skills part of it was like I don't really care. It don't really matter mm-hmm. to me. Um, the game in the beginning, it was like nobody really cared. It it kind of was like an NBA ball star game to an extent. Beginning, nobody cared. You got people post touchdown, like people just running all over the field. Then towards like the as the game went on, it started getting a little bit more like close in. The end, I was low key kind of locked because CJ Stroud subbed the back end was like, nah, I'm gonna lead us down. It's almost like it was came down to I think it was fourth and goal for the win. It was like it tipped off of Keenan Allen's hands. It was I don't know, it was good. Towards the end, I was kind of locked. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't that bad. But as in totality, I still don't think it, it compares at all to the NBA um all-star game. Like it does not compare in the slightest bit. Not but, even close, bro. Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't the worst watch in the world. I put it that way. Would I do it again if I'm not forced to? Maybe if I'm like playing the game, it's on the other monitor. Maybe something like that. But yeah, okay. it, it wasn't it, it wasn't the best. It, um, I will say I like seeing – I'm sorry to cut you off. I like seeing, like, the newer people in it, like C.J. Stroud. He had – bro, Pro Bowl or not, he had one throw rolling out to the left, dime in a quarter end zone to Jamar Chase. I was like, bro, that was that was beautiful. Pro Bowl or not, it was – that was amazing. But I like seeing, like, C.J. Stroud, Jamar Chase, like, Puka start – you know what I'm saying? Like, some of the newer guys, like, it's cooler mm-hmm. to kind of see that. But – and then Keenan Allen, I don't know where it was like. He had, like, four touchdowns. I'm like, bro – you yeah. was just dead for my fantasy team. What are you doing in a Pro Bowl hooping? He was playing. <laughs> he played the whole game. I'm like, bro, where was you when I needed you? You here for the Pro Bowl? But, like, you couldn't play the last five games of the season? Come on, man. The season was cooked, bro. They had Easton stick out there. But, dude, in Hawaii, at least that gave me that gave me hope to keep him, though, because he was – I got a lot of routes. was crisp. He was kind of hooping. I ain't going to lie. He's still a dog, bro. Don't let the age fool you. Like, dudes want to – Sometimes these vets still got it, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mike man. Evans still good for one K, even with Baker. I think he, I think he got opted out because he definitely should have made it. But it was, it was some people no, that yeah, like, he definitely, I think, was that's so that look. I'm glad you even just said that because that's exactly what I was about to say. The Pro Bowl, especially with quarterbacks, it's, it's getting out of hand, bro. We're gonna have to like when we get years down the line. I don't think Pro Bowls are really that valuable when we talk about players, but like we might no, have not. to toss it out entirely, bro. Bro, Gardner Minshew made the Pro Bowl. Bro, that's I think that's the biggest thing because a lot of it, like the receivers, most of the people there deserve to be there. Gardner Minshew is crazy. Geno Smith, after the year he had, is crazy. Like he right. shouldn't have made it. Like some of the the QBs there, it's like even Baker. Like, bro, let's be honest. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you telling me Baker? Like, and, and again, it's because these guys are like opting out of it. Like Dak obviously made the Pro Bowl. Right. But, like he's not done, so I have to take his spot. Josh you end Allen. up with like right. You end up with like four or five guys opting out, and then you have like ten or eleven quarterbacks make the Pro Bowl. Like thirty three percent of the quarterbacks in the league, you tell me, are Pro Bowl quarterbacks? No, it's Bro. defeating the purpose. 
I knew it was cooked when to what Tyler Huntley made it last year, bro. <laughs> bro played what four or five games and made the Pro yes. Bowl. Bro. And I think he had more interceptions than passing touchdowns. Yes, and it was a he could say for the rest of his life he was a Pro Bowl quarterback, which is it's nuts. But it, that I All think right. that's the biggest thing because like I'm looking, I'm like Gardner Minshew, like Josh Allen said no. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, no, but like no Josh right. Allen. Like I I mean, obviously Herbert was hurt, but he you know, and I, like it was so many other people that I feel like could have made it. Lamar probably opted out. Like, yeah, it was just tough. But that, I think that's the biggest thing because a lot of receivers, most of them, they could they come to play. Even the older ones, like I said, Tyreek was there. I think he scored. Keen, like I said, Keeney was hoping for some reason. He, bro, he was playing the whole game. I was like, he's one of those guys where I thought he was gonna play like a drive and then stop. Bro was fourth quarter was locked in, running running zig routes, hooping. But a lot of receivers be, be showing up, be showing out. Yeah, but I, look, I, I I just caught the highlights like popped up on my YouTube from the was it like that passing challenge that they did, mm-hmm. and I was just like, Gardner Minshew, <laughs> the Pro Bowl, right. like he had a he had a great year for him. Like I, I don't want any of this to come off like I'm hating, but like the Pro Bowl, no, no, not not that good, not that good. At least I will say they do it right as far as who should be on the field the most though, because like. I, it was like at least for AFC, it was two was started, then CJ Stroud played the second, then CJ Stroud played some of the third. Gardner Mitchell played some of the third. Gardner Mitchell only played like a half of the third, and then fourth quarter they was like, nah, CJ, we're not about to close it out with Gardner Mitchell. We're not doing that. Go give me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they do it right in that aspect. Gino Loki almost like he threw three picks. He tried to lose them the game. <laughs> he, oh, bro, he threw a big six. Then he threw another pick. I was like, then he threw another pick, two end zone picks. I was like, bro, this is why you shouldn't be in here, bro. Where's yeah? <laughs> like, you should not be in here, bro. Give me Jared Goff. Give me somebody else, bro. He make it. Jared Goff probably had to say no. He had to opt out. He because he would have made it over Geno Smith. Yeah, and probably and Baker. Roger, just off the fact that I don't even really know if they made the Pro Bowl says enough about like what that really means in the grand scheme of it all. Because like, again, the Pro Bowl is not what it used to be, bro. Not even close. Yeah, can't argue that in legacy talks. I'm not doing that. No. The Thunder just beat the Raptors in double overtime, by the way. Dang. They beat them in double overtime, and no one on either team had more than 24 points. What a balanced scoring output from everyone. Let me find this. This this is what what the people want, bro. Right. They want balance. They want your best player to average 22 points a game, bro. Yeah, that, that apparently either that or let's bring back hand checking. Bring back the, the those are Pistons rules, Jordan rules. Jordan rules. I'm dead. This might, this might go for a layup. I could just spear him out the air. Some people was like, people was like, we want to bring back the like the Andre, Andre Robersons and stuff, like those, like Vando, like guys like that, like that strictly just play defense. And it's like, you can't you literally can't do that now? Like I watched Vando kill our offense in the playoffs. Bro. Yeah, like I, it's so much of a liability now. It's it's it is more. It's hurting our offense more. Even though he's bringing us hustle, rebounding, and great defense, he is killing our offense because he cannot do anything offensively. Those guys are done. That you can't do that anymore. Yeah, no, it, it's it's people are too versatile. That if you are so one dimensional. You uh, the only one dimensional players that you can really play for long stretches of times are spot up shooters, and mm-hmm. even that sometimes is like because you're gonna get to killed that. on the other side of the ball. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get hunted, especially like come playoff time. You're going to get hunted. Bro. Oh yeah, so hundred yeah. percent. You get you got to be. Who said the bro? The league is just better, bro. Everyone is literally just even the role players. Everything for a talent level just went up a little bit. So it's just it's tougher and got more versatile. Yeah, league is in the best spot it's ever ever been, and it's honestly only going to keep getting better. Mm-hmm. With that though, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass Podcast. We appreciate you if you listen to the whole thing, whether you're on YouTube or Spotify. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, like and comment this. Like this video. Comment your thoughts on. Feel me the. All star player, all star roster reactions. Do you think the NBA got a scoring problem? Should we do more of these guests to NBA players? Um, go over to the the 
audio platform, go ahead and leave a five-star rating and pre-download the show. Stay tuned because we are going to definitely be coming out with some Super Bowl preview at some point this week because we got to talk about Mahomes versus Brock Purdy. And I don't care what y'all say in the comments. I'm going to keep giving my fair criticisms. Brock Purdy is best to be a parent league, bro. Bro, I, I really think – I'm about to cut off my own outro. I really think when people talk about Brock Purdy – Either dudes be trying to like crown him as like an elite quarterback, or dudes be like, nah, Brock Purdy suck. And if you don't like try to give a, if you like trying to give an accurate take on like where you would put him or where he kind of falls when you would rank QBs or just how his play fits into the grand scheme of NFL quarterbacks right now, obviously it has to go in the middle, but like you you gonna get pulled by one on either sides. Like either people would be like, "Oh, you're you're hating if you're saying he's not an elite quarterback." It's bro, like I don't think he is, bro. Brock Purdy, I think, is a good quarterback. I think the Niners can win a Super Bowl with Brock Purdy. Obviously, they're in the Super Bowl. And that we, doesn't... bro, that was our exact take. And we said we, the people, we that's a hundred comments on that video, and like seventy five percent of them are people saying we're hating for saying that the Niners can win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy, but because we're saying he's not a top five quarterback in the NFL right now, we don't know ball. Bro, he's a good quarterback. I think they can win the Super Bowl. I still would take 15 quarterbacks over him. I still think the system helps him. I don't think he should have been an MVP candidate because I don't even think he's the MVP of his offense, let alone his own team. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, he just because right. he's not a top five quarterback, don't mean there's something wrong with that, bro. Like, you, put, bro, the problem is, like I said, QB wins people – only look at the box score and only look at the wins and loss. And they're like, he's a top five quarterback. Like, bro, there was dudes that was like, when we said, yeah, is he replaceable, blah, blah, blah. He's like, who are you going to replace him for? Kirk Cousins? Like, who are you going to go to? I was like, Kirk Cousins is better than Brock. What are you talking <laughs> that's, about? That's a crazy. That's not the name to have said for He that. was like, who's going to go to a guy who got who a guy like Kirk Cousins? Yes. you Kyle Shanahan, if Kirk Cousins was on the a million dollar deal like Brock Purdy was, Kyle Shanahan would like he would murder someone to get Kirk Cousins yeah. on that <laughs> bro, bro because you telling me just because of stats just because of situation that you think Kirk Cousins is not better than Brock Purdy like dudes is bro people saying yeah Pur- Purdy's a top five quarterback in the league no he's not bro you gotta stop looking at wins and losses and strictly stats without context because everything has context bro because the same dudes that be like Purdy his numbers his numbers will be like Dak still stinks even though Dak's numbers was great too so it's right. like you gotta have context, bro. Then no one has context with Purdy, bro. I just watched the take of somebody saying Purdy ceiling is the Hall of Fame. No, it's not. He's not gonna be a Hall of Famer, bro. Whoa. No, he's not. I swear to God. I swear to God, dude was like, "What's Brock Purdy ceiling?" He was like, "Hall of Famer." It's sports show, like TV, like show. I'm like, I don't even like. I don't even like. Why are we talking about that right now? It, it's so much is gonna have to change. Like, I was just having this conversation last night. Right now, I think it's I think Brock Purdy is a top, probably top ten quarterback. Like he I and I like I think he's in the I think he's closer to ten. Like he's outside of that. He's definitely not close to the top five. Like honestly, bro, let's do it right now. Not in any particular order. Five guys. We could do Mahomes, you could do Burrow, you could do uh Allen. Lamar Jackson, Josh oh. Allen. Mm-hmm. Um Herbert. Justin Herbert makes five. That's just five guys. Not saying that that's the order they put in him. So off the rip, not top five. Okay. Who else CJ, is here? CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud makes six. Jordan Love. I'm taking Jordan Love over Proc Purdy. We can, we can get better names than Jordan Love. Right, right that's, fine. that's fine. That's fine. That's All fine. Right. That's fine. We can do that. Dak Prescott's better than Brock Purdy. I would take Dak. Off the top, I'm trying to look, list the quarterbacks. We just, had, we just talked about Kirk Cousins. Makes Kirk eight. Cousins is better than Brock Purdy. Um, Kyler Murray's better than Park Purdy. Yeah, that's nine. Let me see. I don't want to forget anybody. I want to make sure I have everything right. Let me just pull up. Let me pull up every team just so I make sure I'm not not messing anything up. You said um, 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 Trevor. I don't. Would you say Trevor Lawrence? Law. Off of just talent, yeah, but like I talent right now is not cutting it. He'd be doing some questionable stuff. Jerry Goff is better than Brock Purdy. 
That's a, that to me feels like the closest one, but that would be 10. Do you think Aaron Rodgers at this point of his career is better, or is that not fair because he's hurt? Oh, Matthew mm. Stafford is better than Brock Purdy. Oh, yeah, okay. So that now we're at 11. And if you don't want to count Jared Goff, then we're at 10. And it's like, me personally, I'm taking Jared Goff and Love. So to me, he's at like 13-ish. Yeah, he's all right. So you, you yeah. He, well, the he borderline, goes, he's not yeah. top 10. So it's like. Even if you, like, and I'll give it to you, you want to nitpick some of those guys. Like, if you want to nitpick Kirk, like, I guess, I, I think Kirk is better. But if you want to nitpick some of those, okay. But you're not nitpicking five, like, anybody in that top five. Like, any of those elite quarterbacks, you're not, bro, every single one of them is just, he's better than Brock. And it's not, y'all act like Jalen Hurts. Another one. Didn't I've, seen say people crazy. I've seen people crazy out on Jalen Hurts, though. I've seen people. Take per I, I would not be stunned if people were taking Brock Purdy over Jalen Hurts at this point, which but is see, wild. To that me, is but. the that is the dumbest. Like to me, it does not make sense because just last year when Hurts was in the Super Bowl, he was a top three quarterback. Just because they have a down year, mm-hmm. now it's like, bro, he's not even now. Purdy's way better. Like the recency bias to me, it doesn't make sense. Like that's the same thing we talked about when we posted. It wasn't even a Mahomes video. It was a CJ Stroud video, and dudes was like, "What has Mahomes done to be number one?" Well, he's in a Super Bowl now, so you can't comment right. that now since it's all about wins. Like, but bro, not he, everything is just like we spe- no at no point in the video did we specifically refer to this season. We're talking in the grand scheme of where quarterbacks are because that's how you should look at, at least in my opinion, that's how you should be looking at stuff like this outside of if you're just viewing for individual season awards. But like really? You should be looking at how players, like what players are, right? If right now, if the season, if the league just reset and you can have a fancy draft, like how, what order would quarterbacks go off the board? Everyone is taking Patrick Mahomes with the first pick. And it's like, dudes will, and I guarantee you, if you say, like, people value way too much winning, way too much. Cause like, I guarantee you, if you say, like, Herbert, I'm taking Herbert over Purdy, they would, the argument would be, what has Herbert done? Herbert hasn't carried his team anywhere. Watch the games, bro. You're not telling me Purdy's a better quarterback than Justin Herbert. I'm not hearing it. Like, dude, like, bro, I don't. The problem is, I don't think people know ball (laughs) and know how to actually evaluate the quarterback position. People don't. The people think quarterback is do you throw for a good amount of yards? Do you throw touchdowns? Do you win? That is not what quarterback is, bro. There's systems, there's like reading a defense, there's other things that go into it. There's Mm -hmm. just overall talent wise. And people don't know how to evaluate that, bro. It's literally, did you win? Did you lose? Like, people will say, people, there's people who think Purdy played great this playoffs. Dude just said he carried them in the second half. Purdy had, to me, Purdy sucked this playoffs besides the second half. He was like, all right. It was, he was rushing the ball. Mm-hmm. And he had one, one drive at the end of the Green Bay game. He's not, he has not been playing good, bro, at all. That's when dudes was like, oh, you're going to bench him after, or uh, get rid of him after one game. It's not one game. It's every time I've seen him with with the situation is not picture perfect. He's been bad. They've lost four games in the regular season where he was bad because everything wasn't picture perfect. The playoffs, granted, they won because the other team really threw the games away, but he was bad. Like, no, it's a sample size. It's not like I'm getting rid of him for one game. And dudes that was like, well, you're going to get rid of Josh Allen for one game? No, because if I watch Josh Allen play and he's a, a, a top five quarterback talent, bro, it's like it's not right. the same, bro. You can't compare guys like that. And that, that's why I don't. The Purdy discussion to me is so stupid. Yeah, it, it should not be a controversial take to say that Brock Purdy is a good quarterback and not an elite quarterback. But like I said, he's. He, I really feel like he is the most polarizing quarterback to talk about now at this point because okay. his numbers. Because his, his, the numbers that he put up, which are fantastic, he's put up great numbers. He has a phenomenal supporting cast around him. Um, he's executes this system very well. Like it, all of that is great. I think he's a very good quarterback. I think he has some things that he does at an elite level. I think he has some of the best anticipation that we see in the National Football League. Part of that also comes because he's playing in the Shanahan system. Like. All of these things can be true at the same time while he's also just not an elite quarterback. You can't, everybody can't be elite, bro. There's got to be a cutoff. And you're not like, there's not an argument outside of, like you said, wins, then for him to be in that 
consideration over five, six, seven guys minimally. It's so it's a stupid combo. It really is. It's just do you win, do you lose? That's how good you are. Yeah. And it honestly, I feel like it sucks because like I feel like that's overshadowing the fact that bro, this dude is in his second year as the last pick in the draft and is like playing very well. It was well, played very well last season in the regular season and the postseason. Played very well this season, regular season, and has had some clutch moments in this playoffs. And they are in the Super Bowl with him in his second year as the last pick in the NFL draft. That's an insane story. But I feel like it's getting overshadowed by the fact that because he's done this, now we have to crown him as an elite quarterback. And if we're not rushing to do that, you're hating. Like and it's, and it's like. Yeah, I, in fact, it's like, bro, we can't even enjoy this nice story because you guys automatically. And the thing is, the problem, the reason why people get mad because guys critique him is because that's what you do to elite quarterbacks. You critique elite quarterbacks. So it's like you can't say Brock Purdy is a top five quarterback, top three quarterback. But when he plays mediocre, like try to give him a pass, like, oh, he's the last pick of the draft. Like he had a game winning drive. That's fast. That's not what we do with Josh Allen Mahomes. If no. We hold him right. to a standard of like, oh, not everything's not going well. If you're a top five quarterback, carry us. Like, have moments where you – Dudes was having back. conversations – sorry to cut you off. Dudes was having conversations this year if Josh Allen could w- ever, ever win a Super Bowl because of how he was turning the ball over. Right. It's just – bro, it's, you can't have it both ways, bro. You can't say he's an elite uh, – he's a top five quarterback, but give him a pass for everything because he's the last pick of the draft and blah, 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 right. blah. No. Let's hold him to that elite quarterback standard. P. Dudes was saying, yo, bro, is Mahomes figured out because they weren't this high flying 30 points a game offense? Right. Like, come on, you get you're holding him to do two different standards, but saying that he's on the level of these guys. No, he's not. Yes. Bro. No, he's not. Right. And, and that's oh, and the crazy thing is, that's okay. Oh, that's the craziest bro. part. That's fine. He doesn't need to be. He, like I said, he can win the Super Bowl with the way he is now. And no one even says the biggest argument. Cause if I was a pretty like defender, my only argument would be. He's a second year. He could get better. He's going to get better. Like, I genuinely, that's that's what irks me so much about it is, like, I do actually think he is a solid quarterback, bro. He's going to be with the 49ers for a long time, and I think he's probably going to net out having a good NFL career. I don't know what his ceiling is going to be. I don't even think we should be having. That's a wild conversation to even be having. That's engagement farming. Like, why are we <laughs> Why are we even right. talking about if Purdy's going to make the Hall of Fame? What, is, what are we doing? <laughs> but I just do think he's a, a good quarterback. He's a solid quarterback. He's. I don't know that he'll ever reach. I would – if I had to bet one way or the other, I do not think he'll ever reach elite quarterback status. And that's okay. There's a lot of quarterbacks in the league who don't reach, reach elite quarterback status. Why it's elite. It's a small tier. Kirk Cousins has been very good for a long time. I don't think anybody's ever said Kirk Cousins is an elite quarterback. Dak Prescott has had multiple good seasons. If you took away the Cowboys hate bias, like he's never been in the elite tier, but you, you I don't feel like you can argue that he's not a good quarterback. Yeah. Like you can knock him for playoff balls or whatever, but it's like you can do that for a lot of people. So it's okay to be a just a franchise quarterback, a good quarterback. Those guys make a lot of money, and they have chances to win the Super Bowl every single year. Especially with that type of roster. Right. This is an 11-on-11 sport. You cannot just give the win to one position. Crazy. Q, quarter, uh, wins are not a QB stat, man. That's, just, no. that's my biggest thing. Wins are not a QB stat. There's context. No, there's a lot, a lot of context. So, for everybody – that was on me from what I said about Brock Purdy in that video, bro. I'm st- I I don't think what I said was wrong. I don't think it was hate. I'm not taking nothing back. It's not right. wrong. It's like, not no. a bad thing. Y'all not, not mo- I'm thing. not I, I'm not moved off of one game. I'm not moved off the fact that oh, just because he played bad in the, the Packers game. No, bro. Look, I'm watching the game, bro. I watched <laughs> him play all season. I'm not absolutely floored with Brock, Brock Purdy, and that's okay. Like yeah, act like I gotta. We gotta crown somebody every single year. It doesn't have to happen, bro. And it's crazy because, bro, Brock Purdy could win if he could win the Super Bowl this year. And next year, if he turns into a pumpkin and it like plays like a, eh, or like, all right, say they gotta, you know, they gotta pay IU. They gotta say they lose some of this talent. He starts playing borderline average to bad. 
dudes were gonna flip on him so fast, bro. So mm-hmm. it's like, it, just stop. <laughs> Let's just stop. Like everyone, just take a break, a break and stop. We'll get to see a better idea of what Brock Purdy's ceiling is. Let's have that conversation when he gets paid, and then we see what this roster looks like, and then we see what he plays like. Crazy thing is, I don't even think a lot of those people that are like Brock Purdy's elite. Would you make him the highest paid quarterback in the league? No. Is it, why is that? Why is that even a conversation? So are you we, going to pay? Are you going to pay Brock Purdy more than you're paying Patrick Mahomes? So what are we talking about? End of conversation. No. Yeah, I was saying, what are we? T- a lot of them guys that you said he's better than you would not make him uh, like pay, you would not pay him more than them. Even though he wins more, his numbers are better. You would not pay him the same as those guys because he's not a game changer. I sound like Cam Newton. He's not gonna <laughs> change, he's not gonna elevate you without like these weapons. He's not a guy where you could be like, yo, all right, CMC got older, we move off. The run game's not as good. Carry us through the through the passing game. We only got one elite receiver now. We don't got two. George Kittle, he's starting to yeah, age out a little bit. Carry us, you know what I'm saying? You got decent weapons, maybe one elite elite weapon, but it's really on you because we pay you that much. No, you're not paying him that much, and he's not doing that. Maybe later he could get to that point. You never know. But right now, not happening. Yeah, so look, like, I really do. It's it's annoying because it's I, I don't want the conversation to have to be around this. It's like you can't you can't critique the dude right now, and it's amplified by the fact that they are winning and are in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Niners fans, bro. Honestly, you know what I've started to notice that the whole Bay Area fan did say that. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Y'all they, be they be bro. I ain't gonna lie. They be on social, bro. They be I ain't gonna lie. They be bugging, bro. I'm not. I don't know what it is in the water over there. They just not. It's not all the way there. No. Sometimes with certain things, they just not all the way there, bro. Because the way they yeah. talk about them Warriors, talk about them Niners, they be bugged, man. But hey, it is what it is. That should tell you a lot too that I'm trying to give Brock Purdy as many props as possible as a Cowboys fan, like. I, I, I'm really removing my fandom aside and like being like, as much as I don't like the 49ers, especially for what they've done to the Cowboys the last couple of years, <laughs> like I'm removing all of that and can sit here and be like, bro, I think Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback. He's doing things much better than he should be doing as the last pick in the draft. And nice. the, the, the conversation should just stop there. We don't got to be like, and because of all that, he's a top five quarterback. He's and he's an MVP, and he's like, he's all of them. Like, come on, we can't. Do, why, why are we skipping all the way there? Just, let's just right. slow, baby steps, baby steps. We'll, all right, y'all be fine. We wouldn't even have a problem. Crazy man, crazy, crazy, crazy. But that was needed. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was like a, a quick preview for the. I'm glad we actually got that out now, so we even gotta have that discussion when we do the Super Bowl. <laughs> That, that's done and out the way. That's like a, a 20 minute segment gone. 100 percent Get down to the meat and bones of when we get there. 100%. Really doing the outro this time. <laughs> if, you made it, if you if you made it through the first outro and kept watching and got to this part, you're a real one because I know some people probably clicked off. Hundred percent. This is like bonus footage. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> that gotta be his own little video though, because like no, no, I'm gotta, definitely cutting that. Yeah, I gotta be on a little, a little clip. Definitely cutting that. So if you if you are on the main video and watching this, you're definitely a real one for sticking through the 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 pump fake outro to, to get to the to get to this. Um, like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube. Go ahead and drop a five star on the audio platforms. Stay tuned. Um, join our room on playback. That link is going to be in the description below. I'm going to be streaming up there soon. So so keep out and get the noties on for that. And that's it. I'm Billy. That's Damon. We out. Peace. Yes, sir.